good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Um, this uh, Keep in Touch session has been changed to look at the assessment mitigations that City and Guilds is now publishing uh, on its COVID-19 pages. Um, after the consultation with Ofqual, we've had agreement over what we can do across all sectors uh, and a range of qualifications in terms of making sure that wherever possible, you can get your learners, apprentices, etc., through to the end of their programs. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be uh, a lot of me talking. I do apologize up front for that. Um, but there's a lot of information to go through. I will be leaving time for questions because I think there will be quite a few around what is going on and what we're trying to do. Um, as always, if you need us to talk to you personally about your own circumstances at your centre, then uh, contact myself or David and we can set up an appointment to do that. I'm also joined today by my colleague Amelia Bodel, who will be uh, looking at the questions and will be asking the questions on your behalf when we get to those areas. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get on. Well, if I can get my slides moving, here we go. So we're going to go through the mitigations, uh, assessment mitigations for on-program VRQs and NVQs. Uh, a brief reiteration of the mitigation for EPA or the dispensation for EPA uh, that I mentioned at our last Keep in Touch session. Support that uh, is being provided by City and Guilds uh, across a range of things. We also want to hear from you as well. So there is a link to a survey that you can complete uh, further on. And I will be sending this slide deck out after. Um, and now we've actually managed to find out where the recordings of our digital webinars are going. Uh, we will be publishing those on the website as well. Uh, question and answer session, obviously, um, and also up next uh, and contacts uh, for various items that you may need to discuss. So the guidance applies to regulated qualifications delivered in England, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland, um, because this includes VRQs and NVQs that are used throughout all four nations. Our aim, as always, uh, and as I said at the start, is to get learners to complete and achieve uh, their assessments, their qualifications. Um, so for those who were due to complete by the end of July this year, then we can get them to that point um, and to progress them so that they can either move on um, to their next stages of development or move on to HE or into work as appropriate. However, uh, there is a scope of learners that can be included within the mitigation circumstances. So it is only available to those who were still registered with you uh, on the 20th of March of this year. Now, there is a little caveat to this for those of you doing apprenticeship standards, because obviously um, there's single unit qualifications involved in the on program so you will be getting people coming on possibly doing boot camps with them and them going out um, so these dates may not truly apply to you but for those of you who are doing the vrqs the mvqs so things such as 7540 ict professional products uh, and 4520, the ICT uh, competence products, then these do apply to you. Um, they obviously need to have completed the learning program that addresses a significant portion of the content of the qualification. Uh, in many sectors, it's been set at 70% um, for the digital sector because certain uh, products, they could have finished four out of six units by the end of March. Uh, we've actually made it 65% so that it does bring in a, a large number of learners that might otherwise not have been there. Okay. Any learners that aren't in scope, obviously you are going to continue to do your best. Uh, I think that goes without saying uh, to keep doing uh, remote and blended learning uh, with them to keep them on track and keep them moving. Ken? Yes. It's David. Uh, I don't think anyone can see the slides. 
okay on their screen uh, sorry no one can see your screen how's that yeah that's, that's good apologies T too many buttons to press um, so agenda again that's what we're going to go through sorry Ken I am back now that's all right <laughs> uh, the introduction as I've uh, I talked it through so it is there and will come out on the slides and then the scope of learners so now the key bit which you do need to see which is assessment mitigation for the digital skills sector so uh, these are the mitigation approaches for the summer of 2020 if you uh, are, there are links in here that will take you to the vrq mvq mitigation web pages on our website and you need to be looking uh, what you will find there is a long uh, block with the different sectors named in red uh, and if you click on the digital and it block you will then find this document the assessment mitigation center guidance for MVQs, VRQs in relation to COVID-19 disruption. Within that, you'll find the individual qualifications, you'll find the units, uh, and you'll find whether they are uh, to be calculated, adapted, delayed, or there is no mitigation required. You'll then find uh, following that, uh, the exact mitigation um, for each type of unit that is available. We've included as well uh, things such as uh, vendor alike units uh, in our 7540 uh, and 4520 products, um, but also what needs to be done in terms of where you've used units within our qualifications that have a specific vendor name. Um, and all the rules and regs around that are in that document. So for those doing apprenticeship standards, let's look at on-program tests first and foremost. So in all cases, in all cases, right across the digital space, we have gone adapt. There are no calculated, there are no de delay, there are no, no mitigation. So everything is adapt. Um, some of you who may be on this webinar I've spoken to to get some sense checking around something we were looking at to ensure that every learner, every apprentice could be included regardless of their circumstance or resources they were able to get hold of. And then at the 11th hour, and many of you will be pleased with this, we were allowed to include remote invigilation. And I will do, talk a bit more about that um, later on. However, I still believe that there are people in certain areas that may not have full access to a PC uh, when it is needed in order to be able to do the evolved tests. There might be a, a PC in the household, but it might be being used by a parent for work or might be being used by a sibling for doing learning because they're at school. So in order to ensure that all apprentices are able to complete the on-program tests We've also included the option for you to be able to do either a short report from an employer. We're not looking for more than, than a side of A4 or two sides of A4, just saying that they have seen the apprentice use the knowledge contained in the relevant knowledge units. Um, and all from you as a provider, a similar sort of thing with, with a a grid that will also cover where you have seen that in evidence that they have provided for you. Now, we're not asking for a, a, a mini portfolio to be put together or anything of that nature. It literally is a short report uh, and, a, and a mapping grid to show what you've got should we need to send in an external quality assurer. Following that, you need to do a short Q&A or professional discussion with them to fill in any gaps and just to make sure that what you have seen is truly there in their heads. And as I say, we've done this because we do recognize um, not everybody has the best broadband, not everybody has uh, access to uh, a PC, uh, and, but everybody has potentially got a mobile phone or a landline 
whereby you can produce something and then do the Q&A with them. This is the link uh, to that mitigation uh, page on our website, um, so you'll easily be able to use that uh, once you've got the slide set. As I say, we wanted to make it the most accessible and easiest management for all apprentices. And now by having these two options, where it is possible to do remote invigilation, then you can do that. But if it isn't possible, then you can go with the short report and the Q&A. We want to keep apprentices moving. We want to get them to get to achievement. And we want employers to see that there is progress happening regardless of whether your apprentices are still in work, and, and we do know some in the digital marketing space are, um, or whether they're on furlough, we can at least show that their learning is continuing and that they are achieving the required on-program knowledge. Using the mitigation, uh, you will need uh, the help of your internal quality assurance people, your IQAs. So they need to be checking that the tutor assessors have identified the right learners uh, for adaptation, uh, to use the, the right adaptation. Sorry. You do need to apply a risk-based sampling approach on the principles of camera. So, you know, are you, you know, doing this in the right way? Is it possible to to assess a learner in a particular way? Are you going to have to use remote because you haven't got enough um, work from them to be able to make a call in terms of whether or not they truly have the knowledge? Obviously, the, the appropriate uh, method is being selected. You're not trying to deal with somebody um, who is based uh, in Watergate Bay, for example, down in Cornwall, where you know the the web signal, uh, the Wi-Fi signal or broadband is absolutely atrocious, um, and therefore trying to do remote invigilation is just not going to work. And also that the all of your tutors and assessors, when they're making the judgment calls around uh, their apprentices, it is all being done in a similar fashion so that you are once again choosing the right adaptation. And making sure that people are applying the policies, procedures and any relevant legislation to meet either the city and guilds uh, requirements or any external regulatory requirements. So. I'm not going to go through this uh, one step at a time. Um, I will leave you to read this in your own time. But here is a step by step guide going right the way through. So if you are doing an NVQ or VRQ qualification, um, and if you do do remote invigilation, then once you've gone through the steps of um, checking where your apprentices are, what they need to do, what the, the audit you've gone through to see what they've got to prove uh, that they have evidence against units, etc. Then run the rest of uh, the, the mitigation for that qualification, or in the case of the EPA uh, on program, undertake the tests. Uh, for the MVQ VRQs, you'll be able to go into uh, Ward Garden and claim those units if you've got direct claim status. And again, we'll talk about what to do if you haven't got direct claim status. Um, and those results do need to be with us by the 31st of July. In terms of EPA on program, to a certain extent, you can ignore that end date. Um, and if they do the remote invigilation, the evolved tests automatically put the results in. Um, I am waiting on our assessment team to tell us how we get the results in if you use the report and Q&A. In terms of submission and quality process, uh, I'm afraid there are some forms for you to fill in. So you need to complete a declaration for the learner who meets the relevant adaptation criteria. So which one are you going to use? Uh, it does need to be signed by the assessor and the IQA. Uh, and the units where adaptation is going to be applied needs to be recorded. You need to keep this. You do not need to send it to us. Uh, and I'm afraid under Ofqual rules, we need you to keep them for three years. 
Um, because as I say, you know, we could need to send in uh, an, uh, an, ex, uh, an EQA at some point to monitor the decisions and what you've done. In terms of adaptation <coughs> submission spreadsheet, um, basically you, you need to complete this spreadsheet with the details for all the learners and the adaptation that's been applied. And that needs to be set, uh, signed either by the head of center or the, the relevant um, head of department, supervisor, uh, quality manager, et cetera, who is allowed to sign. We will accept electronic signatures. Um, so, you know, th they are available uh, and the spreadsheet needs to be attached to the CA2 activity in Walled Garden. I will be totally honest with you. I don't have access to Walled Garden in the same way you do. So I have never seen a CA2 uh, in my life. Um, so centres that do have direct claim status, they could go straight into Wall Garden as they normally would. Centres who are on a medium or high risk status will need to request a remote monitoring activity from an EQA from the quality delivery team. OK, and this will need to take place before those results can be claimed. Again, uh, all results need to be in with us by the 31st of July. Obviously, the caveat around um, on program uh, applies. In terms of delivering those remote tests, things to consider. The exams are invigilated on a one to one basis, so scheduling will be key. Um, and especially if you've got apprentices with only one PC in the household. We're still looking for you to book those tests five days in advance. Yes, I know that if you book the tests more often than not, they will appear uh, within 48 hours. But we would like to say, please make sure you give yourself a good five days uh, in advance of when you want them to want your apprentices to take those tests. Invigilators need to be trained. They need to understand what their role is, what they should be doing. They are there as uh, somebody watching and making sure that the apprentice is doing the test. Um, you know, they're not cheating, et cetera, et cetera. Delivery platforms must allow the invigilator to be able to view the candidate, their environment, and their computer laptop screen all times during the test. And we have a full document on how this needs to be done and what you should use in order to make that happen. The test needs to be done in exam conditions. Uh, and this is why, you know, we're saying give yourself the good five days to make sure you can schedule it with your apprentices. You know, they need to be able to uh, be in a room where they're not being disturbed by siblings running around. They're not being disturbed by other people walking through the dining room or the kitchen. Uh, it needs to be in an environment that can mimic exam conditions at your premises as closely as possible. In terms of remotely invigilated evolved tests, they need to be delivered through a web delivery application requiring no installation to the candidate computer. So log me in go to meeting or Cisco WebEx. So essentially you will open the test, then you will hand over control to them to take the test. And that is explained in the technical guidance and how to that is behind this link. In terms of submission dates and result releases, so adaptation claims for MVQs and VRQs need to be with us by the 31st of July 2020. So that's for products such as 75113, which is the social media and business and the older digital marketing qualifications, 7540, the ICT systems professionals and system support, 4520, ICT professional competence, um, 7276, the PC maintenance, uh, 3667, the cabling products, 7574, 4249, the IT user products. All of those need to be with us by the 31st of July. For the on-program qualifications in terms of the standards, then to a certain extent you can ignore this date because those are ongoing and do not have a specific end date like the 31st of July. 
In terms of results released, uh, I've included uh, all the other qualifications um, that City and Guilds is involved in. So functional skills, uh, a lot of work has had to be done in terms of calculating those. Um, that was Ofqual's ruling and, and the Department for Education's ruling. Um, so 31st of July 2020 for all approved results will come out. Essential skills Northern Ireland and essential skills, excuse the typo, uh, Wales again 31st of July. For any of you who are on the call that are dealing with technicals, so our technical qualifications uh, in digital, that would be the 5220 products. The level three results will come out on the 3rd of August for both centres and candidates. But the level two will come out first to centres on the 19th of August and then release two candidates on the 20th. The level two VRQs, the, date, uh, the results for those will also be released at that time. Anybody doing core maths, or extended projects or the level three VRQs, the results to centres and candidates will be out on the 13th of August. In terms of appeals, uh, again, those people who are working with uh, the technicals products, um, these are calculated results. You are calculating them. It isn't us. We're not expecting to see anything at all. Therefore, if you do go for appeal, you're appealing against yourself, okay? Because we're not doing any moderation on these. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, we're not marking them or doing any work with those. You can, of course, appeal the result um, because obviously um, in terms of the projects, we will have seen some of those uh, and will have made possibly made judgments on those. But otherwise, you know, uh, as I say, you've told us what the results should be per candidate, therefore um, you'd be appealing against yourself. In terms of uh, appealing against adapted assessment, to a certain extent, the same thing fo uh, follows. Um, if you are using one of the adapted methods, not the remote invigilation, because clearly that's still the evolved test, um, but if you're using the mitigation of producing a report and the Q&A or the professional discussion, you are making the decision. Uh, but if you want to appeal, you know, then you can go through the appeals process, um, but it can only be made against the final result, uh, not against individual elements thereof. So in terms of mitigation information, so the document that I gave you uh, the brief look at uh, at the beginning of this can be found behind this link. For doing online tests at home, there's a link here that takes you through how to do those uh, and what needs to be involved. And then the technical guidance and how to uh, for remote invigilation is behind this link as well. And we will look to get these out uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours so that you can go on, get those uh, documents, see what needs to be done and get the whole thing set up and people on the move. If you need further advice uh, and guidance or further information around how some of these processes and procedures work, please email uh, centre support or general inquiries. Um, you can phone them, um, however, please be aware you know, phone calls do cost 7p a minute, um, plus any telephone charges from the company that you use. Um, obviously, on the COVID-19 page, there are a lot of other documents uh, and FAQs and information for you to look at. And again, I urge each and every one of you, please make sure you are checking this regularly. Um, every couple of days, if not daily, things are going up on those pages as circumstances change. Um, and that has been true of the mitigation documents. As soon as they've been cleared and checked, they are being published. Quickly through the endpoint assessment then, uh, we got dispensation from NSAR, the National Skills Academy for Rail, who are the external quality assurance bo body for uh, the digital world. Um, and they got that from IFATE, the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education, 
and it is basically that the synoptic projects can be taken at home they do not require supervision so you don't have to sit watching somebody for three days four days or five days doing the work but you need to tell us that is what you are doing and you need to tell us which apprentices are doing it they need to be doing timekeeping so they need to record their activity they cannot have more than the time allowed in the standard so for infrastructure technician it says three days or 21 hours that's it they can't take any more than that for digital marketer it's four days for uh, many of the others it's five days that is the amount of time they can have so we suggest that you work out a schedule the actual project so that you can set a deadline for them to submit the evidence from those projects back to you ready for it being loaded up onto the EPA portal for the independent assessor to review in preparation for the interview. It also means that if you need to do a, a Skype call with them or a phone call with them just to check on them and see how they're getting on, then you can do that at the times that they've told you they're going to be working. Now, you can't help them during that time, but you know you could get on there and give them some encouragement, et cetera, to keep them moving along. There are a couple of documents that we've created uh, if you need them. Um, so one is the Endpoint Assessment Dispensation Declaration Form, um, where you need to tell us what standard it is, what the standard number is, um, and then you need to tell us the apprentice that you, you're doing the dispensation for and their city and guilds number and then you need to give them this form for them to complete to go through how long it's taken them to do the elements of each task i'm going to stop and pause there and um, take some questions okay so first question from june um i have some learners who started a qual on the 4th of march but weren't registered until the 21st of April. Can I use adaptation for these learners or not? Um, if they're on the, if they're on a, an apprenticeship standard, so you'd therefore be using the evolved tests um, or, or the mitigation for them, then that's okay. But if they are on a normal VRQ or NVQ, so one of our credit-based products. The, the bigger qualification, then the answer to that is no, I'm afraid not. Okay, and a question from um, Rachel. Um, do you have a template for the short report for on-programme tests? Uh, I've started to prepare one for that, Rachel. So um, hopefully by the end of this week, I will be able to send something out for you to complete. Uh, but again, you know, if you've got a document whereby you would normally have a grid on a spreadsheet uh, ticking off what your apprentices uh, have done, then that's that's the starting point. Um, so you can tick off the, the knowledge component bits um, and then it's simply saying, you know, I've seen this apprentice do these various things either um, through formative testing or doing our own formative samples, for example, or other tests you may have given them uh, and seen this in the evidence that they've produced from the work base. As I say, we're not looking for war and peace here. It is something just so that you are, it's very clear that you are saying this person deserves to pass the relevant units, that, sorry, relevant qualifications for the on program. Perfect, thank you. And a question from Ying Lim. Does the short report from the employer provider to show what evidence that has covered the KM outcomes, will this be exempt from the exam? Oh yes, so it's it's an either or. Either you do the remote invigilation um, where it's possible and, and you feel that that's uh, easily uh, achievable between you and uh, the apprentice because you know it's not just apprentices who may have difficulty getting hold of resources or not have particularly good broadband it could equally be some of your tutor assessors um, so 
uh, David and I were trying to uh, have a conversation this morning via mobile phones. Um, both of us have a personal phone and a work phone, and, and sometimes one works and sometimes doesn't. So, you know, you need to make sure that that's capable of doing it. But if you if you go down the other option of doing the report uh, and the Q&A, you don't have to do the test. However, there is a caveat to that. All of the standards, uh, with the exception of infrastructure technician, require um, a vendor product to be done, uh, and we have no control over that. That vendor qualification still needs to be completed. Okay, um, Catherine asked for the link, um, which you showed sort of later on in your slide deck, so I've sent that to her. And then a question from Lee, does it still have to be independent assessor invigilating the tests, i.e. not the assessor who has normally worked with the learner throughout the programme? So I assume that's for remote invigilation. Okay, so it won't be it won't be our independent assessor, but you you can use uh, anybody who who um, has had relevant training in doing invigilation. So it can be the assessor, um, but equally, you know, it, it can be other people uh, invigilating them while they take that test. Um, we're not, you know going to put in any hard stipulation uh, we haven't done it to date around doing those tests if they've come in to you or you've gone out to do the test with them in the employer perfect and rachel asks do we need to complete a declaration for learners who are completing their on program standards tests uh, so the answer to that is yes i'm afraid you still need to complete that documentation we need to have that 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 record um and as i said you know we may need to send in an external quality assurer uh, at some point possibly remotely just to check through you know the and sense check uh, your reasoning behind passing those people so yes please complete the forms Okay, um, and another question from Ying Lim. If we're using the on-program tests mitigation by using the short report for employer provider, Q&A PD, for the gaps, how quick does the result or will it be released? Uh, so you are producing the result to a certain extent. Um, and what I'm waiting for from our assessment team is how we are going to be able to adapt Walled Garden uh, in order to enable you to actually put those results in. Because uh, they are currently linked to the Evolve test that automatically puts the results in, then we've, we've got to find a way, it's probably not the right phrase, but we've got to find a way to break the system. So the moment you put in that result, that will be the result. Perfect, and a question from Paul. For centres without direct claim status, um, who will have to arrange a remote EQA sample. Does this have to be arranged before the 31st of July or after? Uh, so ideally it needs to be arranged before because you need to be able to put the results in by the 31st of July. So uh, my advice to everybody um, who is working with products uh, where you don't have direct claim status uh, is to get in touch with your quality team at City and Guilds now and start to arrange those meetings um, for those remote invigilations. Lovely. And a question from Yvonne. As the 9628.11 and 9628.12 are online on-demand Evolve tests, can learners who have not yet been registered fall into these rules and take the test prior to the 31st of July? So um, because apprenticeship standards are a bit weird in the way they operate, um, then, then I'm saying the answer to that is yes, because uh, unlike working with uh, the normal credit-based products uh, and the framework apprenticeships where it tended to be academic year beginning to end, um, apprenticeship standards are roll on, roll off. So you could have started somebody in December last year who hasn't yet taken those knowledge tests. You could have started them yesterday or any point in between. So uh, yes, for EPA uh, on program, uh, sorry, for digital apprenticeship standards on program, 
then if you've been doing a boot camp with them recently and getting them ready to do those tests, then please go ahead. Okay, and a question from Pascal. Um, he's got students on the 745012 and 13 um, that are due to complete units that qualify for the adaptation. Um, saying that the nature of the units means it will be difficult to set them any tasks to do remotely and are going to need to use um, EWT and professional discussion. Um, is there a formal way to record this in the way of a form or document that we would need if the EQA was called or if the EQA so, clearly wants to sample? <clears throat> so you need to, you, you need to complete the forms, um, as I mentioned in the qual a submission and quality process to tell us that you're doing that adaptation. Um, as per a previous question around um, have we got some sort of form for the report, for the expert witness testimony uh, and the Q&A, um, I've, I've started the process of producing those um, last week once we got all this finalised and this document published um, and I hope to have that out uh, to you. It is, a, it is just an example if you've already got um, expert witness testimony documents that you use with employers then please carry on using those um, but yes uh, I'm trying to give you something that you can base uh, what you do on so that you can uh, then actually uh, use that as, as you normally would. I mean, you, you're going to be keeping evidence from your apprentices anyway. You would have been doing formative work with them around the various qualifications. So anything you would have done in order to capture how they've met outcomes of the various units or the assessment criteria, so some sort of spreadsheet grid where you've ticked off the boxes, um, you know, that whatever you've been using, that's the sort of thing that we will be looking uh, at to be kept for that EQA. Lovely. And Abar says he's teaching 757402. Um, is what you're explaining now relevant to that qualification? Uh, yeah, you will find 7574 in the document that, that, that I showed uh, in there. Uh, yes, adaptation uh, is allowable for that. Basically, um, 7574 when it was produced, um, wasn't just a, a, a classroom based product, it was also used in apprenticeships. So all of the units um, are, are really uh, based around portfolios of evidence, even if you used um, assignments uh, in the past. So yes, most certainly um, 7574 IT user qualifications and the 4249 entry level three product uh, can use um, that and it is shown in that document. Okay, and question from Yvonne, um, if they haven't got direct claims, um, can they do the remote invigilation without having a remote EQA visit? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, you, you, EQA visits aren't required uh, if you're doing evolved tests because uh, the EQA wouldn't actually see anything because you uh, and the apprentice uh, even even now, if you brought them into your offices to do the tests, um, once that's done and the result goes up, that's it, it's over. So you don't need uh, the EQA part for, for doing the remote invigilation. Okay, um, and somebody's asked a question about when they're able to get hold of the mitigation option forms. Uh, they should be on the uh, MVQ, VRQ uh, mitigation page now. Yeah, the What you saw when I was going through the submission and quality process are documents that have already been produced uh, and uploaded onto our website. Lovely, thank you. Um, and June wants to know, um, Will a 7574 learners who weren't registered in time have to come back and retake the course in September and sit the assignments as normal? Um, so, unfortunately, the answer to that is going to be to, to, to going to be yes, unless you uh, want to carry on, you know, working with them throughout the summer and submit them, you know, at some point over the summer. Um, but if you want them to to go out and be signed off. Uh, for this academic year, then uh, you know they need to follow the scope of being that scope of learners uh, and the results in by the 31st of July. 
they don't necessarily have to come back in September and go through all the learning again, depending on how you want to work with them. Um, but certainly, you know, you would be looking at, at putting those results through next year. What I would say for some of these anomalies that are coming up, please can you email me and I will go back to to our team who've been working on all this uh, and just you know check one or two of these because I do know that for things like 7574 uh, and even for 7540 there is a small short award of only two or three units um, that where you might have started people um, recently uh, as opposed to the beginning of the year so please you know, just email us with, with some of these queries. But at the moment, in terms of what um, we are being told we can and can't do, then the answer would be, I'm afraid that, um, you know, they'll have to come back and, and finish off in September at that point. Okay, and Michael asks, is there a full list of applications supported for exams being remotely invigilated, such as Teams? Uh, so um, we are saying that that uh, we we need you to use products like GoToMeetings um, or um, WebEx, so things that will allow you to watch what they're doing as well as allow them access um, to uh, the the test themselves. And that is in that document around remote invigilation uh, and how to do tests at home. So those two links will take you through to exactly uh, what can and can't be done and used. And Yvonne asks, would you agree that examples from Get to Gateway would provide good examples of work to prove competence? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so, I mean, we're in, um, so in our Get to Gateway product, there were uh, a number of formative um, tests and things in there that expected them to go uh, and use the knowledge that they'd learnt uh, and demonstrate how they uh, how they were using that knowledge. So yes, uh, again, that is that is part of the evidence that you could point to to say, you know, I have seen them do this uh, and mark that on your spreadsheet grid to say that's where it will be found. Perfect, Ken. Have you provided the link for the EPA declaration dispensation form? If not, where uh, can it be found? No, I haven't, uh, and I will need to get those put up on the website. Um, they may well be under, uh, on the COVID-19 page, <clears throat> um, under the EPA dispensation area, um, but I will get those put onto our um, digital and IT web page under updates um, so that they are freely available for people to get at. Okay, and I, the, currently that's it. Okay, thank you all very much. Um, we will uh, download these questions uh, and I will um, put the answer, uh, write the answers against them to act as an FAQ and we'll send those out with the slide set um, to everybody afterwards uh, as well. So, uh, you know, you will get, get this all confirmed. So, uh, moving on, in terms of support, <coughs> So EPA dispensations, uh, as I just mentioned, if you go to the COVID-19 page uh, and the EPA section, then you will find a whole range of guidance uh, and, and various documents uh, there uh, already. There's also functional skills updates, qualification updates, digital and e-learning resources, as well as support and contact numbers uh, available on that page. Um, as previously mentioned on, on other webinars, we have tried to provide uh, a range of advice and guidance uh, and learning materials uh, uh, to try and cope with the situation we're currently in. So there is e-learning materials to support the management of COVID-19, access to platforms and content where it's relevant and available to support distance learning. So anybody uh, who is doing digital apprenticeship standards with us, um, there is a smart screen EPA uh, preparation uh, tool uh, and the uh, endpoint assessment preparation information and guidance around the various elements uh, in the EPA uh, available. Uh, and there's also free tools to help 
uh, with an apprentice work with a remote assessor to prepare them for endpoint assessment. <clears throat> we do have some um, paid learning materials. Thank you, Yvonne, for mentioning them. Um, so we do have the Get to Gateway. I just want to stress, although it's called Get to Gateway, it isn't just about getting them to the gateway point and achieving the on-program uh, tests. It does include all of the knowledge that they are required to know and demonstrate as part of the apprenticeship standard overall. So it is good for them in terms of being able to say in their summative portfolio, I learned how to do this um, through this method and here you can see me, see me applying that learning. In terms of gateway, we are now allowing the use of digital signatures uh, on both the gateway declaration form and also the authenticity of evidence documentation. We will accept type signatures for the learners only, uh, but for employers and training providers, we need digital signatures, please. If it isn't possible to get a digital signature uh, on those documents, then we need an email, um, letter on, on um, the employer's letterhead, uh, and we need the email to come from a works email address. We're not going to accept Gmail, Hotmail, or any other of those uh, general uh, email addresses. They do need to come from the relevant work email address. For more guidance around uh, what we will and won't accept in terms of digital signatures, again, there's a link to uh, information about that. <coughs> For those of you who haven't used digital signatures, um, I did do a, a bit of a look up of, of what's out there and what's available. I'm not necessarily recommending any of these products, um, but these are examples of uh, digital signature products that are available. And some of them are at this moment in time allowing um, free usage of them for either two or three months or 90 days or whatever. So uh, there's contractbook.com, uh, Adobe sign that goes with uh, a Acrobat Pro eSign, um, and there's also the product DocuSign. So I'm sure there are many others that can be used, um, or you know you can um, get somebody to sign, take a scan of it, and put that on as well. Um, but these are products that are out there if you want to investigate them further. In terms of certificates, um, we do need uh, the information. Uh, to prove that they have completed uh, on program uh, relevant qualifications. So we do need those vendor certificates. Uh, but in terms of certificates from our own programs, we will accept the personal learner record. We'll accept the his candidate history from Wall Garden. We will accept reports from your uh, SIMS or CMIS uh, internal systems or the national record of achievement. In terms of functional skills, and this doesn't apply necessarily to digital because we don't have any level twos, but if any of you are on the call are also responsible for things uh, in the business space or other areas that do, many of those standards require the apprentice to achieve level one, but to undertake level two. They don't have to achieve it, but they're supposed to take it. That has been relaxed. They don't have to do the attempt at level two, but they do need to achieve the level one. We're trying to do, as I've said, as much as we possibly can. Um, we don't think we've necessarily thought of everything, but you can see we have done quite a comprehensive uh, list of things to help and support you. But, you know, we can still learn, we can still do potentially other things uh, that we may not have thought of. So if there are other things that you would like to see us doing, please complete this survey and uh, you know we'll look at those and see what else uh, it is possible. Some of them may be quick fixes, some may take a little longer, uh, but you know if you tell us uh, things that might not be working quite well or might be broken, then at least we can do something about it. In terms of getting support for those of you working uh, on digital apprenticeships, uh, customer if you contact customer services, 
they can get somebody from the EPA customer success team to contact you if you're a bit unsure of how to work through some of the processes. So how to um, book uh, the gateway and the date gateway declaration, or if you're not quite sure of the processes around registering apprentices in the first place, then those people can talk you through and talk you through those documents. You can also go to your business account manager, or you can come to, to myself as the technical advisor. Uh, we can help with some of those things. Uh, we don't know all of the processes. As I've said, you know, we don't see walled garden in the same way you do uh, in order to be able to work through those whereas our colleagues uh, in the EPA customer success team do. Um, the other people that can help you are the EPA partnership managers. Um, there are currently four of them. Uh, there will be five um, by the end of June. <clears throat> um, so they are available at these, uh, uh, on these email addresses. They are there to make sure that if uh, things get stuck, Within the EPA process, um, they can take a, you know, a big hammer to it and help push it through, but they can also help you working with employers uh, and helping guide the employers uh, and, and provide you with advice and guidance uh, for them as well. Um, I've worked with all of these people um, and I have to say, you might expect me to say it, but you know, each and every one of them has been extremely helpful in making sure that um, both our training providers, our colleges, and our employer providers are, are kept informed of what is going on. Um, and wherever there is some sort of uh, blockage uh, to the funnel of getting people through, that they are able to uh, get that sorted and keep people moving. In terms of <clears throat> next steps and what we're doing, we'll continue to do webinars every three weeks. Um, they are still labelled as keep in touch uh, webinars, um, but they may change to cover these sorts of things as circumstances change, uh, and we will reissue uh, an update around them. Uh, you should have had the links for the 23rd of June and 14th of July. We've now put in one for the 4th of August. I will send out uh, a, an alert again uh, that will cover these three dates uh, within the next week or so so that you have the 4th of August as well. In terms of our digital services support, so learning assistant, uh, e-functional skills, etc., they are still running um, drop-in sessions uh, for people. So again, the links are there, please uh, link into those. For those of you who need um, some updates or some retraining around Get to Gateway or want a demo of Get to Gateway to find out what that's all about, about, please email myself or David uh, and we can arrange for somebody from the digital services team uh, to get in touch with you and take you through that. There is also, as I've said, a wealth of other updates going on on our website. So we've updated our nations page uh, so that there is more consistency in the way we deal with the three devolved nations um, so in uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, uh, and we've done a lot of updates around Scotland in particular. In terms of functional skills and core maths, uh, there's further assessment guidance and FAQs and a letter for the learners. For essential skills Wales, we've updated the guidance uh, and FAQs. And in terms of submitting centre grades, especially for technicals qualifications, uh, there is now further guidance around that as well. Uh, and I know this isn't the digital area, but in terms of EPA FAQs, and this is what I'm saying, you know, these will be updated um, as things change in each uh, particular industry sector. So uh, healthcare and dental nurses, there is some dispensation for them. Uh, and also IFAE are now in some extra gateway flexibility as well. So. EPA FAQs. Anybody do, who's doing ESOL, uh, there's some new guidance for that. And uh, technical qualifications, uh, a very, very large piece of work has been done around FAQs and what is supposed to be being done about calculated results. And then if we do have anybody on from Wales uh, and you have colleagues working in the health and care learning areas there, 
then there's a new declaration form now that is in both Welsh and English. So I'm going to pause again, see if there are any more questions. OK, I've got a couple of questions that have come through. So Yvonne says um, they have learners due to complete EPA in August, September. Do you think these adaptations may apply to them going forwards? So uh, all the adaptations um, we are being told, uh, and, and again, this isn't a sitting guilds ruling, this is coming from the external uh, regulating bodies, are certainly there until the end of July. Um, while you know we can see schools are starting to go back, et cetera, we, we know that many colleges and private training providers aren't yet opening their doors. So there is an expectation that this, these mitigations will continue um, and we will let people know as soon as we are given the okay to to actually say how much longer they will go on perfect um and andrew said would it be possible when newsletters are emailed to send out links to downloadable documents such as forms and guidance uh, the answer to that is is most certainly so uh, I have prepared already a quick newsletter to go out with this slide set as well um, and it does contain all of the links that you've seen already um, for, for the mitigation and the remote invigilation etc and yes of course um, once I get those documents up on our website um, I will include the links for those as well perfect and that's it Thank you. So, um, as always, uh, you know, if you have any questions, you need to discuss your um, own particular circumstances, please get in touch with myself or David uh, and we can arrange an appointment via Teams um, or Zoom if you prefer to use Zoom um, or even phone you uh, uh, however we need to communicate. Please keep e emailing us, please keep talking to us. You know, that's that's what we're here for. We're here to help. Um, if you need more uh, advice and guidance around apprenticeships directly, um, frameworks or uh, standards, then you can contact the apprenticeships uh, at cityandguilds.com. I will repeat it again and again. COVID-19 updates page. It is vital you check that every 24, 48 hours because it is constantly changing. You can go to the Apprenticeships Hub as well to find what's out what's happening, what other products are coming on stream in terms of standards, not just in the digital sector, but other sectors as well. And if you haven't, and I should assume most of you have, because otherwise you wouldn't have got my alerts, um, please make sure you and your colleagues are signed up for the email updates. That's how we send these things out. That's how we get them out to the vast majority of our community. Again, the survey, please complete it. Tell us how we can help. You know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, you know, make sure that we can run as close to business as usual as we possibly can. It only leaves me to say thank you to my colleague, uh, Amelia, uh, for being my inquisitor uh, on your behalf today. Uh, David is there in the background, um, taking this in and understanding what is going on as well. So, you know, he will be available to help. Uh, and thank you once again for joining us and hope that you can join us again on the 23rd of June. Thank you all. Look forward to speaking to you again uh, in the not too distant future.
Hello. Hello. Oh, you're still there. I thought I'd killed it. No, you haven't. <laughs> I was waiting. You're still recording, I think, but um, from what I can tell. I wasn't oh, sure if we wanted a, a chat, but um, about anything or, or not. Don't have to. Oh, well, I'm not seeing it this end. I mean, it's, it's not, you're not presenting. Um, okay. 